The world's record stone sheep is considered by many to be North America's single greatest trophy. Ellis Chadwick took this unbelievable specimen while on expedition in British Columbia in 1936. Why is it that one animal that now lives only in pictures and in mounted form is so celebrated? Is it because his long, spiraling horns are so impressive? Is it because today, sheep are small in numbers and few have the opportunity to hunt them? Perhaps it is that this particular trophy, and how and when it was taken, stands as a testament to the once untouched and unspoiled wildernesses of North America. Or maybe it's because this one trophy represents our long fascination with the biggest and the best. And we fear that someday we will lose these great animals and the opportunity to hunt them. For some it might be that at a Boone and Crockett score of 196 and 68 points, no other ram of this species on record has even come close in size. Regardless of the reasons, hunters have always celebrated such great representatives of nature. It is not known exactly when the display of hunting trophies began, but we do know of its importance. Man's first art, applied to the walls of his cave dwellings, was not that of trees or rivers or sunsets. It was of the game animals he hunted, male animals with big horns and antlers. These early artisans demonstrated an appreciation for the largest of a species in early European cultures. Castles were adorned with trophies that represented a mastery over the land and the quality of the landowner's holdings, which included wildlife. Such displays of mounted antlers and pelts at one time served as a constant reminder of man's connection with nature and his dominion over our wild creatures, a dominion that would eventually be transformed into a conservation ethic. As North American sportsmen, we know that we lost much of our wildlife, especially big game, to over-harvesting for commercial markets, habitat loss, diseases, and irresponsible land use. The grave condition our large mammal species were in at the turn of the 20th century had many responsible sportsmen wondering if these great animals would be lost forever. Is it conceivable? that an appreciation of big game trophies led to a big idea, like establishing the American system of conservation for the betterment of fish, wildlife, the habitats that support them, and the people? History shows this is exactly what happened. The earliest champions for conservation were sportsmen, big game enthusiasts, to be exact. Men like Theodore Roosevelt, George Bird Grinnell, and a handful of others that formed the nucleus of the Boone and Crockett Club founded by Roosevelt in 1887. The club and its members worked diligently to establish and gain public support for the concept of conservation, enact laws and legislation, set aside land as sanctuaries for recovering wildlife populations, and raise funds to support the science of wildlife management. Our interest and fascination for trophies today can also be linked back to the actions of these same sportsmen. While devising a scoring and records keeping system for big game animals may not seem significant to conservation, big game records keeping played a major role in the recovery of our wildlife populations and remains to this day a very important part of our hunting culture. It is true, we don't commonly associate trophies or record books as having anything to do with conservation. It is perhaps that we are now three generations removed from the revolution led by North American sportsmen to save what was left of our dwindling wildlife populations. It is also possible that in today's world, we have elevated and commercialized the concept of trophy to a point where it now appears to be counter to conservation efforts. History has shown that wildlife having an economic value is a good thing. You will learn, however, that over-commercialization can be extraordinarily destructive to the wildlife we cherish. <laughs>